Hey, what's up? Ch Who? Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Tristan Barracks here, the digital storyteller. And on today's episode of Cinecut, I'll be talking about my thoughts of the A7. R, no, sorry. The A7 Mark III. Are you ready? Let's go! Woo! <laughs> been salivating over a lot of Sony releases. Uh, first and foremost, there was the A7R Mark III, then there was the FS5 Mark II, and about, I would say, maybe three or four months ago, there was this baby here, which is the A7 Mark III. Now, there's been tons of video reviews about this particular camera. Um, there's been some amazing reviews, and I'm not going to necessarily go in depth with regards to this camera, but I'm going to give you some of my initial um, impressions with regards to using it specifically for cinematography, for filmmakers. So if you're a photographer, we're not going to go into the photography stuff. We're just going to stick to film, video, cinematography, digital storytelling as it pertains to the medium of film when it comes to the A7 Mark III. Let's talk about um, just the design and the build quality. Um, if you're used to the the Alpha series lineup, um, you, you'll be very, very comfortable with the A7 Mark III. It is very much uh, from the same sort of inspiration or influence that you're used to. So uh, if you have an A7S, which I do right over here, A7S Mark II, um, or if you have an A7R, uh, or if you even had an A A6300, A6500, it's all sort of the same sort of build. I'll put this down now. The A7 Mark III, I should say, is of the same sort of likeness and build quality. Now, of course, the um, the biggest feature in terms of just the design is the grip is a lot bigger. Um, the grip is actually bigger because there's a bigger battery in there, as well as there's dual card slots. Um, love that. One of the major reasons why I picked up this camera to at least try out and test out is because um, I was really interested in having a mirrorless Sony camera that did have dual card slots. Um, there were a couple issues with my A7S Mark II where the battery conked out on me and I lost like one or two files because they got corrupted I, or I didn't have a backup of a card that died on me. Um, so, you know, those things happen every once in a while and it's always much better to have have two uh, card slots just in case one fails or just in case of any sort of emergency, you have that backup. The other thing was the battery. I really wanted to try out the battery and see whether or not this battery, this A9 and A7R Mark III battery um, was really what all that it's cracked up to be. And honestly, guys, it is ridiculously good. And this new Sony battery allows you to get the most performance um, within the smallest form factor that I've ever seen in my life. I'm telling you, this battery lasted me, I mean, I've shot at least two or three weddings with with on probably one and a half batteries, and I'm shooting full-fledged four, uh, 4K, 1080p, 1080p 120, 1080p 60, and, and literally I'm only using, at best, two Sony batteries. My A7S Mark II, which is right over here, which had the, the very small, pathetic batteries we all know and love and cherish, would go through about six or seven batteries for one wedding. That's crazy, six or seven batteries. On the other hand, with the A7 Mark III, I literally shot a wedding on Sunday and I only used a battery and a half uh, of battery life, which is, which is mind boggling. And I was shooting for 12 hours, so, 
guys, I mean, it, it's amazing. Now, the 4K that was on the A7S Mark II was, was legendary, it was great. Um, the low lighting was really good uh, when you're shooting 4K at cropped mode or even in, in full frame mode. Um, but I really wanted to try it out for the A7 Mark III because I just wanted to see, just wanted to compare it and see whether or not it even compared to the A7S Mark II. And honestly, it's amazing. Like, it's just, this camera, every time I use it, it blows my mind how amazing it is. I literally turned it on, started shooting with it. I shot in a very, very low light situation um, at weddings with limited light, maybe one spotlight. It looks super, super nice. Um, just as good, if not better, than the uh, A7S Mark II, um, the A7R, the A9. I feel like this camera is, is, is producing some amazing images uh, from a film perspective so let's talk about frame rates with the a7 mark 3 it has 24 frames per second it has 30 frames per second it has 60 frames per second it has 120 frames per second it also has um, one frame per second two frames per second uh, in terms of doing a time lapse if you want to do a time lapse you can set that up right inside the camera it's super easy to do the thing that I, I absolutely love the most about this camera in terms of the frame rate is the 120 frames frames per second my god it is buttery smooth and i'm not exaggerating I, I, you know i i just feel like not even talking anymore because because you don't you may not believe me you may believe me i don't really care but check out just some of these clips camera a lot of those shots that you see were, were were shot with this particular combination which is the a7 mark 3 and the sony uh, 28 millimeter f2 this body and this lens combination is amazing it's like a match made in heaven for uh, glide cam work for gimbal work uh, for handheld slow-mo a lot of the slow-mo that i've been doing is like 120 frames per second just holding it with this sort of setup and allowing the autofocus to just snap into focus and get exactly what i want in frame uh, to be focused i mean there are so many good things about this camera. Let's talk a little bit about autofocus. The autofocus is bananas. The autofocus is night and day, head and shoulders, better than the A7S Mark II. I mean, the A7S Mark II was, was terrible to begin with. We both know that, we all know that. But, I mean, again, having a camera that's this this size, this price point, to be able to have it uh, have really snappy autofocus in video mode is just so refreshing. The other thing that I love that Sony did with the A7 Mark III is they actually created an option on the mode dial called S and Q mode. And S and Q just stands for slow and quick mode. Now, for those of you that are familiar with their cinema line ca of cameras like the FS5 Mark I and Mark II or the FS7 Mark I and Mark II, they actually have this built-in option where you can go into the S and Q mode and that allows you to go into the high frame rate mode very quickly so if I want to jump into super slow-mo 120 frames per second uh, really quickly and something really um, fast is happening I can jump into that it switches right away to that mode and I can film instantly whereas before I'd have to go to a mode or I'd have to jump into the menu set settings or have a custom uh, button that did that now it's actually on the dial which is 
so much better. Thank you, Sony, for that. Really appreciate that. So it has a micro HDMI port built into it. It also has a headphone jack. It has a mic jack or, or an audio out jack. Um, it also has a USB type C port for charging and for transferring um, high data uh, through it, which is super, super welcome. To be honest with you, I wasn't sure that this camera was going to be something that could even rival the A7 S Mark II because the A7S Mark II was such a dramatically uh, game-changing type of camera when it came to full-frame, low-light performance uh, for cinematographers. Um, but I can honestly say that this is probably better in performance, if not comparable, probably even better. I, I just I, I don't know how Sony did it. I don't I don't understand it. I'm not trying to understand it. I don't really care. All I know is that I can shoot at you know 12,000, uh, 16,000, 20,000 ISO, and it's crystal clear. Um, if you look at some of this footage that I'm putting up right now, this is like at like pretty pretty high ISOs because it's really dark and I'm shooting in slow-mo at 120 frames per second and it looks really clean it's very usable footage and I just I don't understand the science that's in this camera this is this has to be magic because it, the performance is super dope cinematographers if you're looking for a vlogging camera if you're looking for a camera to capture uh, life's events to um, capture things like weddings and and live events and and to be able to have a a really small footprint and profile this is the camera to get it has the battery life uh, issue solved it has autofocus issue solved in, in the video modes it has low lighting issues solved in it it has um, 4k a full frame it, albeit at a lower bit rate but it's still clean it's still nice it's still amazing you can stream with this you can connect this to your smartphone and, and, and send over the clips and edit the clips on your phone if you wanted to uh, there's so many things though the 120 frames per second this camera is insanity it's the definition of insanity and and the price point even as a Canadian I got this for you know taxes in about 27 2800 bucks it's worth every penny it was worth every penny I, I mean I was really contemplating whether or not I want to keep this camera or whether or not I even want to pick it up and now that I have it I use it every day. I don't use my A7S anymore. I have an FS5 Mark II and, and I love that camera, but this is my go-to camera for vlogging, for filming a lot of my smaller client projects. This is just the ultimate um, sort of camera when it comes to being able to do a lot of different things really, really well. Well, this ends another episode of Cinecut with your host, me, Tristan Barrett. I hope you learned something and you laughed out loud too. Please leave some comments, follow along as we learn together, and and stay creative. Thank you for watching. Peace. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel because it is creating dope content that I hope is helping you become a dope digital storyteller. Until the next time, have a wonderful day. Peace.